Hi, all. Just want to give you a little update from the pictures we posted yesterday on Instagram and LinkedIn. Had some really good discussion on both platforms about this patient with a little par stress reaction. And I wanted to go through a few more pictures, go over some of the topics you guys brought up, and also see how you would treat this patient. I'll tell you what we're doing for him right now. So as we see here on the T2 images of the sagittal, we have this stress reaction. This is one of the pictures I posted yesterday. For a little more background, this is a 16-year-old football player. He took a pretty aggressive hit, especially for high school, uh, that caused hyperextension injury. He had a lot of back pain. Being how high level he was, and they were in the state uh, playoffs at the time, he actually played through this for two more weeks, which I think exacerbated a little bit. After they were out of the playoffs, though, he came into us, and this is when we got this MRI. This is about December, end of November, early December of last year. So here's the T2. One other thing I do want to point out here that um, – Doug Beal, or my good friend, noticed as well on LinkedIn, is there is what looks to be some edema at the other uh, junctions at well as well, L2, 3, 4. Um, what I didn't post was the T1. The T1 to me points me more in the L5 direction, but that was interesting to me as well when I first saw that. Um, it might be something that I dive into a little more after some of the discussion we've had on LinkedIn. Um, to get some more pictures, this is the axial view at L5. Obviously, we see that big stress reaction edematous area seen on the MRI on the left side here, just for completeness of what I was talking about with the, uh, what we saw on the T2 sagittal at L4. This is L4. I don't see as much edema here. I'm not as concerned that there are reactions going on there as well. Um, so we're continuing to just monitor L5. So the decision at that time was to get at a CT scan to see if there was a full through fracture. And this, this CT scan was obtained a few weeks after, not that far. And we see, you know, the L5 PARS defect right there. Obviously no movement on flexion extension views. I have those as well. They're normal. Um, I was not, there was no neurological symptoms at all. No radiculopathy, no bowel or bladder issues. Really his only pain was when he was active. When he wasn't active, and by active, almost playing football, when he wasn't active, he didn't have much back pain, especially on the left side. And he's a righty righty uh, thrower so when he throws and turns down in that side it hurts him a lot this is the sagittal view one thing i like to point out here to the younger guys or anyone that's just getting into reading mris you can see some people get faked up that this is the facet joint um it's not the facet joint that line right there is not supposed to be there and neither is that line there this is actually you can see a little cut of the facet joint there that's more the angle that the facet joint usually is and if you if i were to scroll through here you'd see the facet joint there as well so what was the decision we made this time? It was in the off season. I told him the rest. And, you know, with a lot of high school kids these days, it's much different than when I played high school sports. They don't have an off season anymore. It's kind of crazy. They were, they didn't want to rest too much. There was these showcases that they're going to all the U S but they did shut it down for about six weeks and we got a follow-up MRI. So here's our follow-up MRI uh, over here. And you can see a lot of that edema is gone. He took some anti-inflammatories, really rested it. I did put him in a brace. Um, LSO brace. I don't know if he wore it as much as we'd like to say. His parents said he wasn't great with wearing it, but obviously a lot of that edema was gone. He was feeling great. And I told him he could return to play. And he actually played in a few showcase games and all that stuff and felt great until uh, this is the axial view of the follow-up MRI. That's what it was six weeks before, six weeks after. Looks like it's healing very nicely. So we returned him to play with the mindset that if it starts to hurt again, come back in, shut it down immediately come back in and check it out. We didn't do any injections, you know, obviously no instrumentation. So then we return. This was to give you an exact time, early September. Uh, season's just getting underway. And he didn't even take a big hit. He just took one of those games where he took a lot of hits and his back started to hurt quite significantly again. And as we can see from the T2 here, all that edema is back um, right in the same spot. So we look at the axial, same thing. Edema is back in the same place. This is the level above again, because once again, I see these kind of edematous looking uh, islands going on at L3, L4. So we we go, but once again, I didn't see much on, on the axial at that level. But once again, same thing here. So I got a follow-up CT scan. We shut them down. This time I've shut him down only for a week because he's in the middle of the season. And this is one thing I'm going to discuss at the end. It's it's very hard to shut these guys down for a long time or what's the right thing to do. Um, so here, unfortunately, we have what looks like 
the same stress reaction we had before. So this is the one before, this is our new CT scan. We're gonna look at the axials. This is actually the one before on this side. And this is the new one here. What's interesting here is we see a lot of sclerotic bone here. So this is try, tried to heal. You know, one discussion I had was, this is a refracture or did it never fully heal? And I think we're going with that it never fully healed. It's kind of becoming a non-union, um, which is a little concerning for the long-term of this player um that's the more pictures i have some people ask for labs to look for a serial negative spinal arthropathy i didn't order that yet i think the thought is actually a great thought i may order it maybe an hla b27 even a rheumatoid factor just to look at some infl inflammatory markers what am i doing for this player now so he's in season high level player i'm trying not to give too much away hippo wise but it's tough to hold these guys back because there is a lot at stake. It's interesting, you know, high school players, you think, oh, just shut them down for the season and let them go. But I think that's where you kind of have to just have the discussion with the player and the parents and say, this is what can happen. So I painted that picture of what happens if this totally fractures and you get a spondylolisthesis and it's moving. And, you know, I, I'm not trying to scare him. It's just the truth that he's going to require surgery and he's probably not going to play college level or pro level football if that if that occurs and you know you're talking to a 16 year old and when we we're all that age I don't think we process things more than a week in advance but he really understood that and he actually skipped a big game for that um, but we're going week by week right now and you know I actually just spoke with him earlier today he says he feels great he wants to go back to practice I'm trying to hold him out of a game or two more he's taking a few NSAIDs, that's something that I'm up in the air about. You know, I want to decrease the inflammation, but I want to, I don't want to decrease the healing. So I'm telling him to take NSAIDs when he has the pain to decrease that inflammation, maybe before a game or before a practice. Um, but he, at this point, is still shut down with an LSO brace on. I've talked to him about doing regenerative therapies. There's not much data out there. I'd love to hear what you guys think about doing PRP or BMAC here. And then, of course, I've talked to him about this other concept where people kind of come in and put in the screw right through the pars here. It's uh, basically a pars uh, fusion where they go right through this pars that kind of come in from this angle, come right through and shore up that area, see if that can help them out. Um, this is where I'd love to hear more from you guys. It's a, it's a tough situation for a young kid with a bright future. Um, he is in a lot of pain when it hurts too. So he, he understands that this is a big deal. It's something he has to take seriously. Um, you know, the best option is shut him down for three months, right? And wear a brace and it'll all heal and it'll be good. But you have to wear the negative effects of his lifestyle after that. If he, you know, if he misses out on possible uh, recruiting and stuff like that. I, it, it's always interesting to have these players and have, uh, have, discussions like this so let me know what you guys think you can always reach out to me instagram linkedin at any time and i'd love to have more of a discussion good case guys